Hello everybody and welcome to our uh, our fifth video in our Engineer Tomorrow video series for thermodynamics. Um, today what I want to talk about is uh, pressure, you know, what is pressure? This is something that I keep bringing up in conversation in our videos, so you know it's important to understand what it actually means. Um, so to get started, what is pressure? Pressure is a uh, relationship between uh, forces exerted on a body and um, and an area where that force is being applied. So it's the force per unit area. So pressure equals force per unit area. Okay. So um, I guess the simplest thing we can think about is let's say we have um, this is the ground. Okay, on Earth. We have a bunch of like molecules that are all over in the air, okay, and they all exert a force on the ground. Well, what is that force? That that force per section, okay, for a certain area, gives you the pressure, okay. And I brought up the ground because this is an important concept that you have to understand in thermodynamics. Um, when you're on Earth and you're just walking around, there is be there is an uh, absolute pressure uh, being applied on your body, even though you don't feel a force on your body. It's because we're accustomed to it, but it's still there. And uh, this is the atmospheric pressure. So the PATM is my abbreviation for it. Is the atmospheric pressure that acts on your body and things, you know, any anything else that's on the surface of the Earth, and that is quantified by uh, 101,325 pascals. So you might say, you know, what is a pascal? Well, a pascal is actually the unit of pressure. And what a pascal means, I guess I should have explained this earlier. Um, it's a newton per meter squared. Okay, and it's important to always look at the unit. So why is it a newton per meter squared? Where the force is a newton. A meter squared is the units of area, so it kind of makes sense uh, that these are the units for pressure as well. And it's important to be able to use that in any analysis. You know, units are very important. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, there's many times I, in uh, undergrad when I had to take tests, and I checked my units and I realized that something was wrong because my units didn't match up at the end. So I encourage you to use units to help you solve your problems as well. So um, next, I wanted to discuss what uh, about, about gauge pressure and vacuum pressure, and you know what does that mean? So let's say you have a little pressure gauge. You know, I'm assuming people have seen that. Um, okay, that it's you know there's a tank with a certain pressure. Okay, so what is the pressure inside that tank? Okay, well around the tank. Like I just said, there is um, atmospheric pressure that is acting on the tank. Okay? And that atmospheric pressure is acting on the tank. So if the pressure inside the tank is higher than the atmospheric pressure, then what happens is you have you know, external forces that are acting on this material. You know, at the, the higher pressure is trying to get to areas of lower pressure. And if your material is not strong enough to withstand those pressures, then what happens is you get an escape. You know, there's there's a hole somewhere, and the air gets out, and it goes to equilibrium. Okay, but what happens if the pressure instead goes down? Okay, then you get, you create suction. So this, so what happens is that all, uh, so the the net force that is acting on this tank is actually going inward instead of outwards. Okay, so when the pressure is high, we call that gauge pressure. And when the pressure uh, higher than atmospheric pressure, we that that difference is the gauge pressure. So let me just quantify that in the equation. So P total equals P gauge plus P ATM. Okay, and this term is usually what is being output from this gauge over here. Okay, 
So sometimes what happens is you get the, the negative pressure on the inside and that we call that vacuum pressure. So the vacuum pressure, we relate that to, follow my format here, this is, uh, so if the pressure is lower than the atmospheric pressure, you get a vacuum. That's that suction I was talking about. And that is related to the total pressure by uh, P A T N plus P vacuum. Okay, and P vacuum in this case could be negative. You could say minus P vacuum and then have it positive, but that's just a preference thing. Okay, but also sometimes and sometimes in thermodynamics people don't refer to them as vacuum or gauge. They just say the pressure uh, the pressure gauge is negative and then that, that would be the vacuum value. So sometimes vacuum isn't used, but it's important to understand the terminology uh, when you're dealing with, uh, with pressure. So next, another important concept I wanted to discuss is pressure with depth. With depth. Okay, so when you think of uh, a swimming pool, okay, you are in the, um, let me draw the swimming pool over here. Okay, and if you ever swim to the bottom of the, the swimming pool, sometimes you feel, so like when you're around like eight feet, you feel your ears like they're going to pop. Okay, so what's, what's happening? So what's happening is as you go farther down, um, what happens is, so, so I'll call D is the depth. As depth increases, what you get is you get a higher pressure. And that kind of makes sense, right? You have a larger amount of stuff above you. So when you do the force per area, you get a higher pressure when you're at a lower position. Okay? And to actually quantify that, um, there's a relationship between depth and pressure, and that is uh, the pressure gauge, okay, we're doing that relative to the atmosphere, so we'll say atmospheric is right here. The pressure gauge, which is the difference in pressure between the surface and where you are, is going to be related to the density times the gravitational acceleration of uh, where you are, so if you're in a mountain, it's different from if you're at sea level, uh, times the height. Okay, so that height is that Delta D, um, and let, let's just change it to Z, okay? So Z will be in the Z direction, it's the height direction. Okay, so rho G delta Z, and that rho can be replaced with a specific volume as well, like doing the inverse. But um, this, this allows you to quantify the pressure change with depth, and that's very important when you're using devices like manometers, and uh, barometers and things like that because there's a direct relationship between the change in elevation and your um, your pressure. Okay, so uh, just just to further drill this into your head, let's say you have something that is submerged in water. Okay, and then I'll, I'll call this H2O. Okay, and so essentially what's happening here is you've got this weight you know, this water is acting on um, on your uh, your object. Okay, so you get a net pressure downwards. Okay, and then you have a, a certain amount of pressure that I'll just say is about the same. Um, so here the pressure is lower, pressure is higher over here, but you know, generally what's happening on the right hand side and the left hand side cancels out. So let's Let's not worry about that. What is happening? Sorry, guys, just bear with me a second. So if we say that uh, the pressure acting on the sides actually cancels out, you know, and you have another pressure down here at the bottom, this pressure at the bottom, P2, P1, P2 is going to be greater than P1. So what does that give you? That gives you a net uh, force that is acting in the upwards direction. So if this thing weighs a certain amount, you know, it has 
certain amount of mass has a certain density, okay? Um, if, you know, the weight, so that there's, I'll just say there's a force upwards, okay? So if you set your weight of your device equal to the force in the upwards direction, then you say that your device is, uh, is going to be buoyant at that location. Okay, so if you have you know, steel and you throw it in water, it's going to sink to the bottom because the pressure force that's acting in the upwards direction does not uh, give you the same value of the weight. The weight is much larger. So that's why if you have a log that you throw it in the water, because of the density of the log, you still get that pressure that uh, allows the log to stay afloat. So um, that, that's all I really want to discuss for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at uh, applying this in more detail and uh, understanding Pascal's principle, which is the basis for uh, taking a lot of pressure measurements. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.